I moved to Port Angeles City Light, you know, where Port Angeles is on the Olympic Peninsula, small town, and I was the system uh, engineer there. I moved up to head the utility. I enjoyed that because I got into operations too, and engineering, the practical side of it. Uh, there's always been this dichotomy between uh, engineers and linemen. They, the linemen think, oh, these engineers are always trying to design things that overkill. And the engineers think, oh, these linemen, they just are not safe enough. They don't use the proper precautions. And so it was nice to be with a small utility where you could try and bridge that gap and say, you know, we are trying to be practical here. So I like the diversity of a small utility. From Port Angeles, I went to Springfield Utility Board in Eugene, Springfield, Oregon. That was a big utility. It was a different type of utility. I was the manager of the engineering department. And then I came to Lakeview, a co-op, where it's the utopian type of utility structure. Okay, So locally owned, locally controlled, cost-based power. That's the way it should be. We don't have a lot of regulatory agencies above us. We run it by a governing board that's elected by the members. If they don't like the way it's run, they vote someone else in. Okay, what do I, so I like the diversity of my job. I still do some engineering, even though I'm the general manager. I hired an operations individual to move into my position because I couldn't justify having two engineers in our small company. There's only 26 of us in the whole company and we serve the entire east side of Lakewood, including the industrial park here, which is the fourth largest industrial park in the state. Uh, but we believe in cross-training, so we wear many hats. So the diversity I like, because I can put my finger on the pulse of just about every job in the company and I'm familiar with what's going on. What I dislike about the job, I mean, no job is perfect, but what I dislike is when you have to terminate someone. Obviously, no one likes that, you know, personnel problems. But I believe in giving everyone a chance. So if someone isn't doing the job, I like to talk to them. Say, okay, this is the areas you're doing well in, these, you know, see some improvements. Specifically, this is what I'm talking about. Now, I'll give you so much time to address that. Is that reasonable? You know, let's talk about it. So we give people enough time, and if they still choose not to work with it, then it's no surprise to them that we need to get someone else to do the job. Talking about that, uh, Dr. Venditti said, what are we looking for when we're hiring people? We're looking for well-rounded individuals. Sure, we need people who have had some experience in the job at hand, and sometimes you know, they're just starting. It's a beginner's level job. How do you get experience? Someone's got to hire you. But I'm also looking for a resume that shows some balance, community service. Someone who's interested in community service is not all about themselves, and they're more likely to really give to the company. How do we retain them? We retain them by continuing to help them grow. In this day and age, you know, they talk about the cutting edge, the bleeding edge. You got to stay informed, you got to stay uh, with technology, you have to grow with it. You have to continue to send your people to training. Otherwise, they're just going to stagnate and the company is going to be hurting. That's just like regular life. You gotta keep up with the modern technology and the older that you get, the more you're like, why can't this just stay the same <laughs> at some point when it keeps advancing? Very, very true. And, you know, I, I'd like to draw a parallel from there. It's, it's like relationships. You know, we, we're all involved with relationships. But you have to nurture that relationship. 
it'll never stay the same. It's like getting into a river, you're in a boat, and you can't stay in the same place. The river is flowing. So you'll either be dragged down or you have to make progress upstream. Same with the relationship. You have to continue to nurture it. Whatever relationship you, you have, just take the time to get to know yourself so you can share yourself with the other per person and get to know the other person. Be clear in your expectations. What is this person bringing to the relationship in your eyes and in their eyes and vice versa? Have that discussion. What's the first job you ever had? Uh, in India, you don't have a chance to do much uh, when you're going to school because of the high, large population and uh, high unemployment. I think I just had a, a part-time job before I joined the seminary uh, working at a gas station. They had promotional thermoses that they were selling and, and I did that. But when I came uh, to the States after I chose to leave the seminary because I decided that was not for me, I was too young to know what I wanted, I did all kinds of jobs to get through college. I was a dog catcher, an Easter bunny, a bus boy, a janitor, a school bus driver, an aquatic director for Idaho State Boy Scouts. I did all of that. And it was, some of them were taboo jobs in India. To be a janitor was somewhat taboo because you had servants to do all of that. But you want an education, you go after it. You focus on the goal. What kind of music do you play? Well, you know, I started off with an old guitar that was on the community table in the seminary. It had no strings. I put strings on. I learned how to play the guitar chords. I then, uh, I was accompanying myself. Uh, I grew up with music. We sang around the piano. Uh, I then learned to play bluegrass banjo when I was in Oregon. I learned to play the harmonica back in high school. I decided I've seen other people do this. I guess Bob Dylan does it, play them both together. I said, well, you know, it's good for the brain. So let's try it. So I started, got a stand, play the harmonica and the guitar together. And why it works, it's good for the brain. You're doing two different things. So well, if it will work with the guitar, it'll work with the banjo. So I did that. If it works with the banjo, it'll work with the piano. I soon moved to the piano, and I chose to teach myself to play the piano without reading music. And I plan to teach a class on that one of these years when I retire, because a lot of people would love to play the piano, but they are deterred by having to sight read. And I believe you can learn without having to sight read. I just went to it from chord improvisation through the guitar. What part do you sing in your singing group? I lead the group. We started uh, 23 years ago singing at nursing homes. And so I, I guess some people would say I have a baritone singing voice. Uh, but you know, I, we're not into any specific uh, voices and harmony. I do harmonize from time to time, but it's more a natural harmony. Uh, do I have any other hobbies besides music? I enjoy teaching. I haven't had the time for it. I enjoy email, if you believe it or not. <laughs> I, rather than say it's a necessary evil, I've decided to embrace it. And when I'm done, at the end of the day, I don't watch TV. I don't have the time for it. I will quickly go and check different emails, motivational emails. I don't have groups I send emails to. I choose every single individual. Will this person like it? Well, Dr. Venditti like it. I occasionally send him some. So it's a way of keeping in touch to tell this person I'm thinking about you. We never had this opportunity before. We had to sit down and handwrite a letter. How fortunate we are. Uh, love of music come from your background. I've spoken to that. What inspired me to sing, it was the family background. World travel, Europe, India, within the States. 
motivation in life, I mentioned, I want to make a difference. I want to help people around to be the best they can possibly be. I believe the good Lord does not make junk. Every one of us is special. What individual do you see as successful? You know, I don't really have any particular person. I just see everyone as special. I suppose my parents who had the formative influence over me, and it was only till I was 11. I went to boarding school after that. But, but obviously they had some solid values to implant. Uh, do you consider yourself a family-oriented person? Very much so. You know, I have three kids. Our youngest is on his second tour in Afghanistan. He's a helicopter pilot. So we worry about that. Will he come back alive? But we have to remember that our kids, our parents, our gifts, we don't know how long we're going to have them. But rather than bemoan the fact that we could lose them, why not enjoy the time we have with them when we are with them? Apply this to everything. Apply this to your health, too. It's a gift. Make the most of it while you have it. I talked about Lake Wall Gardens already, and I've talked about where I've lived in life. So I'm sorry I'm three minutes past, four <laughs> minutes past. We can take just a moment for questions before we wrap up and I say a few final words. What final questions do people have for Robin? Okay. Okay. I am getting my AA in accounting, and I've been volunteering. Um, I did my intern with the city of Lakewood, but I've been volunteering there since my intern's been up. At Is that Lakewood. At Lakewood, at City Hall, there in the accounting department. <laughs> but I was just wondering, so you think that's a good thing to keep doing, volunteering, until I'm done with school to go look for a job? Definitely, because it gives you immediate feedback on your efforts to get that education. Is this something that you really want to do? You will see how you can put to practical use what you've learned in school. Yes. So I encourage you to do that. Okay. Question. You mentioned doing yoga. Do you ever use a heat room? I have not used the, uh, the hot yoga. Yeah, the hot I've, yoga. I've done the Hatha yoga and the Kundalini yoga. So I do the shoulder stand, the headstand. The headstand I've been doing for about, oh, 50 years. So you, know, you <laughs> probably don't think I'm that old, but I will be 65 in two months. So I've been doing it since I was 15. And I do the shoulder stand. I do yoga for breathing, for balance, uh, for circulation, for stretching, to stretch the bodies, to stretch the mind. Flexibility of strength. Absolutely. Yeah. And I alternate, do yoga every day, I do muscle building in between, and then I do aerobics on the other days, both the treadmill and the elliptical. And then I swim if I'm traveling. Well, so, yeah, that's great. It looks like you're in good shape. <laughs> Anyone else? It's 12.50, I guess. So thanks again. I appreciate the opportunity. Maybe if you can wait right